Today's lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Here ends our lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. John, the first chapter, verses 29 through 42. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates as teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas which is translated 
Peter. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this weekend is based on the Gospel lesson from John, and it is simply, Come and See. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So one of the stories I told in a sermon many years ago that got more uh, laughs, but also more serious conversation and feedback um, is a story I'm going to share with you today. So forgive me if you've heard it before, but I think most of our new people have not heard it. And it's a story um, about duct tape. So when I was a young single mom with three kids trying to manage a household, it just seemed as though everything was constantly breaking and duct tape was my go-to item. I used it to fix everything. So one day I was in Benny's and uh, I'm talking like a typical Rhode Islander here. So sad when Benny's closed, but I was in Benny's buying several items and including three rolls of duct tape. And the young woman behind me in line said to me, excuse me, miss, what is that stuff? And I looked at my purchases and I was like, what do you mean, what stuff? And she said, that shiny silver stuff. And I looked at her in shock and said, you mean duct tape? And she's like, the that stuff? That's what it's called? I said, yes. I said, you're kidding me. You've never heard of duct tape? And for like three minutes, I waxed on about how fabulous duct tape is, how I use it to hold the, the hood of my car down, how I use it to keep the door of my dryer that will never shut shut, how I can't sew, so I use it to like Put, um, keep the hems of my pants and my skirts in place. Uh, you know, anything needs to be fixed and held together. There I am with my duct tape. Um, so this woman actually said to me, hold my place in line. Where did you get that stuff? And I told her where to find it in the back of the store. And she came back with two or three rolls of a duct tape. So I had made a convert now, how many of us wax on about some fabulous um, film or TV series where we just love and we go on and on about it to people or some fabulous new restaurant we, we found that we just can't get enough of? But how many of us wax on as easily about our church community or our faith or the fact that we have God in our lives? So um, think about that. You know, we, we speak so easily about something like duct tape but we're so much more hesitant sometimes to share our faith. Um, as I prepared this sermon, I couldn't help but remember a beloved sister in Christ, many of us knew. She died a few years ago. Her name was Kathy Perkins. And the reason why I thought of Kathy Perkins in terms of today's gospel is because Kathy was, I always called her our first Lutheran evangelist. She, um, most Sundays or Saturdays when she would come to church, she would bring a friend and they would say, she would introduce them and they would say, Kathy has told us so much about this church community that I just had to come and see for myself. 
And Kathy, you know, Kathy is always inviting me to church. And almost every week she would bring someone with her. And, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, and several of our members at this church are people who Kathy reached out to and invited to come and see our church community. And then they would come and they would like it and then they would become a part of the community. I also think of Church Beyond the Walls community. Um, so often when people ask me what that is and I say, well, it's a community that ministers to and with people living in poverty and, and experiencing poverty and many also experiencing homelessness. And we have a time of worship and then we share a community meal together and we just kind of hang out and we're community together. And so many people have all kinds of questions about Church Beyond the Walls that finally I, I say, just what John the Baptist said today to his disciples, um, or what Jesus actually said to his disciples, John's disciples, come and see. Um, because you really can't um, get what Church Beyond the Walls is all about unless you come and you experience it. You really can't get what First Lutheran Church is all about unless you come and you experience it. So today's gospel has... John the Baptist, um, standing there with several of his disciples, and it's at the point, it's in the beginning of the Gospel of John, and he's about to pass the baton. He came as the Elijah figure, as the one to prepare the way of the Lord, and now he sees Jesus preaching and teaching, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, um, really fulfilling the, the prophecies from Isaiah. And so um, John points to Jesus and says to his disciples, and I like the old translation, behold the Lamb of God, or see the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so he points to Jesus and he bears witness to Jesus. And then his disciples kind of start to follow Jesus. And when Jesus turns around and says to them, um, what are you doing? Um, and they say, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus says very simply to them, come and see. Um, and sisters and brothers, that's really all it takes in terms of kind of witnessing to Christ is just to give someone an invitation to say to someone uh, a, who doesn't have a church community um, and could really use that gift of a spiritual community to say to that person, hey, um, come and see, come and see what my church community is about. Come and see what Church Beyond the Walls is about. Um, and I ask you, why would it be even more effective to invite one, someone to come and see than to just tell them about it and witness with your words or your testimony? Why would it be even more important, do you think, to invite them instead to come and see? Hmm? Well, it reminds me of the story of the woman at the well who had her own encounter with Jesus and it so transformed her that she ran back to the town that she was from and she proclaimed to everybody, I just met this man who told me everything I've ever done. Um, this could be the Messiah. And when they're like, what oh, man, Who's the, who, what are you talking about? She said simply, come and see. And it said the whole town, based on her testimony, went out and came to see this Jesus character. 
And then they um, invited Jesus to come and stay with them and be with them. And he was with them three days. And at the end of their three days with Jesus, they said to the woman, it is no longer because of your testimony that we believe, but now we have experienced for ourselves what this Jesus uh, person is all about. And so that's why just that simple invitation to come and see is even more important than waxing on and just telling someone about Jesus. Because when we tell someone about Jesus, we're, we're witnessing to our own story, to our own faith. But when we invite them to come and see, we're opening them up or giving them an invitation to experience Jesus Christ for themselves, to have um, their own epiphany, their own awakening, to develop their own relationship with Jesus. And so, sisters and brothers, um, Just like Kathy Perkins um, did not have a a degree in uh, biblical studies or theology, um, uh, she just had this love for Christ in her heart and this love for her church community. And so she was as enthusiastic um, about sharing something she absolutely loved as I was in sharing my experience of duct tape when I was a young woman with that other woman. Um, And so Kathy Perkins is an excellent example, I think, because um, in today's first reading from Isaiah, we're told that God called Isaiah to um, be a prophet, to witness to God's saving love. And it says, I called you before you were even born. I called you when you were in the womb. And, um, and so Isaiah, from the time he was very young, um, served as a prophet and, and witnessed to God's presence in people's lives. But in today's passage, he, he shares that sometimes he felt like he was not effective. Sometimes he felt uh, despondent. He felt like um, it was too heavy a burden to be a prophet sometimes. And, and God basically says, no, I, I called you from the time you were born. I called you from when you were in your mother's womb and I gave you all the gifts you need. And God said, maybe it's too little of a thing for you to witness just to the people um, of Israel, to your own people. I'm going to give you an even bigger role. I'm going to call you to be a light to the nations, to bear that witness, to be that light for the whole world, for everyone you encounter. And um, and that is uh, what Kathy Perkins did. She shared her faith with everyone she encountered because she was, um, she always said how very much her relationship with Christ had completely turned her life around. And she believed that it can turn anyone's life around. And when we really experience that, when we are passionate about something and believe in it so fully, then like myself when I was that young woman um, who convinced another young woman to go and buy a couple rolls of duct tape You know, we will share from our hearts, from our own experience, but not necessarily with words, but by simply inviting someone to come and see, to have their own experience. Um, 
So sometimes our witness is not so much with words, but with invitation and with an example, with being that light. St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. So sisters and brothers, um, perhaps this weekend you can invite someone to just come and see what this Jesus of Nazareth is all about. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.